In my last video I made an inductance meter, so now I want to make a capacitance meter that works together with the other one so that one device can measure both things. The principle that I want to use is the discharge of an RC circuit, where the resistance is a known one and the capacitor is the one that we're trying to measure. Just like the inductance meter, I'm going to use the analog comparator to sense the analog voltage crossing a certain reference. In turn, the output of the comparator is going to trigger the input capture of the timer counter 1. This will provide the time that it took the capacitor to discharge to a certain point. Here you can see the circuit diagram. On the top right we have a voltage divider to provide 2.5 volts. On the right we have our unknown capacitor that we want to measure and that's connected to two different resistors that will be connected to either 5 volts or 0 volts or to the high impedance input. The analog voltage produced is connected to A6 which is one of the inputs of the analog comparator. Pin D6 is connected to the other input of the analog comparator and gives a 2.5 volt reference. So what we want to measure is how much time it takes for the capacitor to discharge from 5 volts down to 2.5 volts. And so at this point you'll be saying, but the formula for the discharge only specifies how much time it takes to discharge the capacitor by about 36.8% using the RC constant. This is actually just a specific case of the general equation that describes the voltage over time of the RC circuit. Tau is the RC constant. If we divide both sides by the initial voltage, we have the formula as a proportion. So if we specify that the time at which we look at the voltage is the RC constant, then the output will be indeed 37% of the initial voltage. But we want to know the capacitance as a function of the time that it takes to have the voltage on the output. So we can take the initial formula, divide both sides by the initial voltage. So then we know that the exponent is just the natural logarithm of the fraction of the two voltages. And then we can turn it around to find C as a function of the time. In this case the denominator is a constant and we will calculate it for different values of the resistance and then we will take T which is what the timer gives us and we can calculate this fraction finding C. Now it's time to look at the code and see how it works. This includes the part for measuring inductance, but I kept them as separate as possible so it's clear. First we define some constants, and these are the specific ones for the capacitor. In particular, these are the values of the denominators that are calculated based on what the timer prescaler is and the resistance. Then I include some libraries. This one is for driving the LCD. Here I define some variables that I'll use in the following code and these are two function prototypes to the functions that I'll define in a moment. These are two interrupt service routines and these will be called for the timer one uh, input capture event and it includes the part for the inductance and the part for the capacitance and this is common for both. And this uh, gets called when the external button is pressed, so very simple. Then this is a function that I'll explain in a moment for delaying. Here we have our main function, and the first thing we do is set some registers. These are for driving the LCD, so pretty simple. And here we enable the global interrupt so that all interrupts can work. And we set up our analog comparator. So uh, here I have comments explaining very simply what everything does, so I don't think I have to go over it. Here I set up the timer counter one. This is a new thing compared to the inductance meter and uh, it just basically enables the external interrupt so that uh, this interrupt service routine can get called when we press the button. And then I have an infinite loop here that basically calls either the capacitance measuring function or the inductance measuring function. And if it notices that the button was pressed, then it switches what the task is, so it changes which function will get called. Here we have the task or the function that measures capacitance, and we set a couple registers, just the input multiplexer to the analog comparator. And then we set the prescaler of the counter to 1 so that it counts at uh, 16 megahertz. The denominator to the function that I explained before is set to the appropriate constant. And uh, this is the power of 10 that it has to keep track of because uh, otherwise this constant would be too big for a 32-bit integer. Then we set our pin to drive the resistor, in this case the 220 ohm, and we set it to high. <coughs> We wait one second to wait for the capacitor to fully charge. 
Then we reset the flag and the timer. And at this point, we uh, set the output pin to high and wait for the RC to charge. We wait four milliseconds, which is the maximum time that it could uh, take to charge uh, before the timer overflows. And then we set back uh, to input the pin of the resistor. Here we check whether the ISR was called and uh, whether the result is uh, smaller than 1200. If that's the case, it means that the capacitor is very small. And so we redo the same measurement, but using the 10K resistor. And it's the same thing. I don't have to go over it again. Then in both cases, I take an offset to uh, account for a small delay that it takes to call the ISR. So at this point, I check whether the flag is zero, so the ISR was not called. And this would indicate that uh, the capacitor is very big and it didn't have time to charge the half of the voltage. So at this point, I redo the measurement, same concept, but with a prescaler of 64. So the timer is a lot slower to count and the 220 ohm resistor. I don't have to re-explain this. The only difference is that here I have a custom function for delaying that periodically checks whether the external interrupt was triggered. So if we press the button, the way this works is very simple. We just pass it the milliseconds like we would for the normal function, but it has the added uh, benefit of printing on the screen that it's measuring and it writes three dots to show the user that it's actually doing something and it's not blocked, kind of like a loading bar. And it checks every fifth of a second whether the button was pressed and if so, it returns uh, immediately. So after this is done, whether it actually took one second or the button was pressed, we have to check if the button was pressed. If so, we return and it will change uh, which measurement type it executes. And the rest is the same as before. And in the case that it's a very, very big capacitor, we redo the same thing, but uh, just with a prescaler of 1024. And we have to wait longer because it would take the capacitor even longer to charge and discharge. And the concept's the same. At this point, we check whether there was nothing connected or if the capacitor is really too big to measure. And then if that was not the case, and so it didn't return, we uh, actually measure what the capacitance is. Because I'm using fixed point arithmetic, like in the previous video, I want to uh, multiply by 10 the delay until it's at least 1000. And then we calculate kind of like the inductance, the capacitance by dividing the delay, so T in the formula of before, by the denominator, which is the constant that we set in here. And we keep doing that until the capacitance is uh, between 100 and 999. And we keep track of the power of 10 so that then it can be displayed correctly. We uh, use sprintf to store what the string to display is. And then we put the dot in the appropriate place to uh, keep track of the decimals. And then the last thing is to just print what the prefix is based on the power of 10 that we kept track of till now. And then once it's done that, it returns and goes back to the loop in the main and gets called again. The next thing to do is build it on a breadboard to be sure that it works. So that's what I did. And here you can see I'm trying a few different values of capacitors and it seems to work perfectly. Because I wanted to build this project so I could keep it and use it in the lab for measuring components, I decided to make a PCB for it. So I went over to PCBWay.com, which not only offers 3D printing, CNC machining, and just about anything you might need for your projects, but they also make great PCBs for very affordable prices, and they kindly offered to sponsor this video. So after getting an instant quote based on all the parameters of my PCB, I zipped all the Gerber files and uploaded them to PCBWay's Gerber file viewer. This allows you to check your project and be sure that you exported everything correctly. At that point, I placed the order and got the package in just five days, including the weekend. So here I got my PCBs. I can open the box and they look really good, very detailed and no defects. So head over to PCBWay.com to get an instant quote and order your professional PCBs for your projects. So at this point, it's just a matter of soldering on all the components. I recommend starting with the SMDs and in particular with the power circuit. Before we continue, we can check that all the pins that need power have it and there's nothing wrong with the circuit so we don't fry anything. At this point, I added all the other components. I put some headers to be able to connect and disconnect the LCD easily 
So then I gave it power, I had to adjust the LCD contrast with the potentiometer, and we can see that everything looks fine. Here we can test it again and confirm that it's still measuring capacitance correctly, and I can also check that the inductance part is also working right. So thanks for watching so far, really hope you enjoyed the video, and I guess I'll see you in the next one.